Hello friends, welcome to Rapid Revision for Computer Science students. In this section of undecidability, we will be discussing the part 4 that is decidable and undecidable problems. We will discuss in detail for all the problems and we will finally make a chart and prepare a chart that will be helpful in the examinations. In the previous video, we have discussed about decidable and undecidable problems of regular languages. And uh, I've told you that the following problems are decidable under regular languages. That is, all nine problems are decidable under regular language. I've also told you about the trick to remember this. That is, uh, I've al already told you that uh, remember the first letters of every problem. So, it will be me fee it sick. Me fee it sick. Okay, uh, it is a bit different, but you can remember it uh, and that will be great if you remember it. Okay, so it is me fee it's sick and um, M is for membership, E for emptiness, F for finiteness problem, E for equivalence problem, I is for intersection empty problem, T is for totality or completeness problem, S is for subset problem, I is inter intersection finiteness problem and C is for co-finiteness problem. So that is uh, the trick that uh, you, have, you should have to remember in order to uh, learn it. Okay, so these nine problems are Mifi Itzik. Now, um, I've told you that uh, the regular languages are closed under these nine problems. Decidable. Uh, uh, these uh, following problems are decidable under regular language. So, that is uh, the thing that you have to keep in mind. Um, so, in the uh, previous video, we have uh, discussed about regular language. Now, it's the time to discuss uh, for the other problems also, for the other languages also. Uh, so, uh, firstly, I will describe all these nine problems in detail and we will be discussing uh, them and uh, after that we will be preparing a chart that will be helpful. Okay, now um, heading towards our definitions, I will uh, define each and every problem so that uh, membership problem, it means checking whether a string x, a membership problem, it means checking whether a string x is accepted by a given finite automata or not. Okay, so membership itself says the uh, definition that is uh, if the given string x is a member of the finite automata or not. So, it is all about membership problem. Now, second is emptiness problem. It means checking whether given finite automata accepts empty language or non-empty language. So, that is the point. Again, the name empty, uh, empty comes and tells us uh, the meaning of it. Now, third one is finiteness and this is also uh, tells what is the meaning. That is, it means checking whether the language accepted by a given finite automata is finite or not. Okay, so finite and finite. So, the name itself tells us that uh, whether the language accepted by given automata is finite or not. Now, fourth is equivalence problem. Okay. So, it means checking whether two finite automata accept same language or not or equal language or not or or uh, we can say that they are accepting uh, same language or not or they are equal. So, we are checking the equality. So, it is about, uh, about the equivalence problem whether the two finite automata accept the same language or not. Now, the fifth problem is intersection empty problem. Uh, here also the name uh, fully suggests what uh, does it do that is uh, intersection that is the uh, intersection of two languages L1 and L2 is is equal to is empty or not so it is phi or not so L1 in intersection L2 is equals to phi or not it means checking whether uh, intersection of two languages is empty or not now heading towards our next uh, problem that is totality problem or completeness problem. Here the word completeness tells us about its meaning. That it means checking whether the given language is complete or not. That is L is equals to complete language of sigma star. We represent it by sigma star, the complete language. So is L is equals to sigma, sigma star or not. Now seventh problem is subset problem. Uh, here name also suggests that L1 is a subset of L2 or not. It means checking whether language L1 is a subset of language L2 or not. Now, the eighth problem is intersection finiteness problem. That name also suggests here everything that is intersection, whether the intersection of two languages is finite or not, is finite or not. So, uh, we have defined this one. Now, ninth one is uh, co-finiteness uh, problem. Here, co is uh, means the complement. So, finiteness also determines the finiteness. So, it means checking whether the complement 
of the given language is finite or not. So that is all for the nine problems we have discussed and it may be remembered through the formula or we can say hint me fee it sick. Okay, M-E-F-E-I-T-S-I-C. Me fee it sick. It can be remembered these nine problems. After that, we will be discussing all problems at a glance. Okay, so uh, do it friends. It will be very helpful if you uh, if you're able to do uh, remember these things. This, this table might be looking very complicated, isn't it? Yes, but it is not. It will be very easy because I have told you the uh, hint to uh, hint to learn it. That is M E F E I T S I C. Mifi, it's sick. You have once you have remembered this, you have got nine problems in your hand. After that, you have to just remember three. That is uh, these. This uh, can also be remembered through R A C. That is R A C, uh, reservation against cancellation. You can uh, you can remember it like that. Okay, so R is for regularity problem. A is for ambiguity problem and C is for complement is complement of a language language are of same type or not that is the language itself and its complement are of same type or not that is a uh, whether it is uh, of uh, both are of regular language both are DCFL both are CFL or not so that is what you have to remember. So, uh, for the starting ones, you have to remember M A E F E M E F E I T S I C, I T S I C, and then R A C. So, that is all, uh, all for remembering the problem. That is 12 problems you will be able to learn. What are they? That is uh, first is membership, e is uh, for emptiness problem, F is for finiteness, E for equivalence, I is for intersection empty problem, T is for totality problem, S is for subset, I is for intersection finiteness problem, C is for cofiniteness problem, R is for regularity problem, A is for ambiguity problem, and C is for is complement and uh, the language itself belong to same uh, category or not, or of same type or not. Okay, so uh, here we have discussed the problems in detail. Now we will be discussing how to fill these entries for each cell. And here we are having the different languages that is regular language, DCFLs, CFLs, CSL, recursive language and RELs. This is in the same order as we have discussed in the decision uh, in the closure properties of formal languages. The row entries are same. That is regular language is the smallest one. Then DCFL, then CFL, then CSL, then recursive and then recursive enumerable. These are like that. Chomsky, these follow Chomsky RST. Okay. So how to remember these one? Uh, first of all, you have to remember that uh, for the regular language, all things are decidable all 12 are decidable so let's mark them so all 12 are decidable and for the rels recursive enumerable language all things are undecidable all problems are undecidable all 12 okay before saying anything you must have to remember that you are discussing the 12 problems and you have to know that these 12 problems what are these are in order to say anything in the problem Okay, so this is undecidable. So we have marked these two. So these are very easy and inner ones are also very easy. Uh, yeah, that is the key point here. That is easy. Okay, so what is easy? That is uh, DCFL takes easy. That is E I S I. It is easy only. DC for DCFLs, the key term is E I S I. E is for equivalence. Checking whether two uh, PDAs or uh, we can say uh, two DCFLs accept the same uh, language or not. That is equivalence problem is undecidable. So we'll mark for E, for this E, for DCFL we are, uh, it is undecidable. For intersect, for next one is I, that is intersection empty problem. Okay, for intersection empty problem it is undecidable. For S1. For S is subset problem. So for subset problem, it is undecidable. And next one I is for intersection finiteness problem. So this is undecidable. So you have to mark that uh, only these four are undecidable and rest are decidable for the. Um, if we are talking about these nine first nine ones. So uh, that has to be kept in mind that firstly we were we are discussing for Mifi Itzik and after that I will be discussing for 10 to 12 problems. Okay, so in uh, 1 to 9 problems 
uh, only these are undecidable and rest are decidable so uh, let's mark it so this is uh, decidable this is decidable this is decidable and this is decidable up to 9 so up to 9 we have marked that um, this uh, eisi that is easy uh, easy is a different uh, definition eisi okay maybe the pronunciation same uh, this is words are different letters are different eisi not eesy okay so ddd and uh, here for equivalence intersection empty and subset and intersection finiteness problem it is undecidable and for the rest it is decidable now heading towards uh, cfls uh, for cfls you have to remember that uh, it is uh, decidable only for the starting three problems okay and for rest it is undecidable so it is decidable for only three and for rest it is undecidable so after that we will remember that for every uh, here we are talking about whole all 12 ones for the rest 12 it is undecided for uh, first three it is decidable and rest nine it is undecidable now for csls CSLs and recursive language, you have to uh, remember that it, it contains symmetry. What kind of symmetry? Let's see. Here, here the symmetry is like uh, here DD and our, uh, last one is also DD and rest are UD. That is uh, first and last one pairwise is decidable and the in between everyone is undecidable. Okay, so you have to mark it like this. So you, you can remember it very nicely. All are UDs. These both are uh, same only. CSL and recursive. First two are uh, first one is decidable and last one is decidable and rest are undecidable. So we have done filling all every uh, once and uh, just these three are remaining. So let's fill these also. We will be filling this one. Let's take this color. Okay. Here regularity for DCFLs I can. Um, say that uh, you have to just remember that ambiguity problem for dcfls are undecidable and uh, uh, rest ones are decidable among these three 10 to 12 okay that is the uh, ambiguity problem for dcfls are undecidable and rest two are decidable so let's mark it so this is decidable and regularity problem is decidable and complement of a language and the language itself are of same type or not so these are decidable um, and uh, however this table was looking so complicated but I think that it's now um, a bit easy easier than the previous uh, le learning and the smugging up okay so by using this hint and uh, and the things I have told you I thought uh, I think that uh, you may be able to fill the table very easily and uh, answer the question very fast and quick um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video so please like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now. Thank you.